there, people, and welcome to an amazing, amazing Kosher Vids podcast that's about to happen today. We got something special for you. This is a podcast. The way it works is it's just me today. No guests. I'm just going to spew, just give you parts of my brain that I was thinking about. Um, some real deep stuff, some real cool stuff. Let me just give you an intro. Um, I have been giving self um, development courses for the last about 10 years. Thank God, Mar Hashem, in uh, the Water Baby Sifta. And this year, I'm starting to branch out more, and I feel like I've gotten it pretty solid. And I'm going to start giving um, the plan is to start giving the classes outside uh, to communities and things like that. And so, to develop hopefully a webinar of the different courses um, that have been under development. And I think they're really, really powerful. I mean, they've been a smashing success in the Misifta Waterbury um, and really, really a life changer for many. The way it really all got started was I had a friend who, his name was Arya Freilacher, if he's listening to this, it's because of you. He introduced me, me to a guy named Reb Yom Tov Glazer, who I absolutely love. He's a powerhouse, he's a magnet, he's unbelievable. And um, he gives a course called The Possible You. It is a life-changing course. It's a seven-day life-changing course. Um, and it goes through the development from childhood to adulthood of how you develop fears and how those fears develop your personality, your identity, and how you base your perception of life through those fears and through those identities. And it's a very, very powerful course. Through that course, you know, I really got introduced to the work of self-work and self-development. And, um, you know, I've been t- I've taken many courses. I'm a big, big landmark guy. I was a call the chauffeur guy when they were around. It could be they're still around in Israel. I took many other, a uh, few other, you know, seminars. And, um, and also just myself, a lot of research, a lot of reading, tons of reading, and webinars, courses online. And um, that has really, really brought me to a place where, thank God, it's just opened up a whole new way of looking at the world. We're, we're so trapped in our reality of how we think everything should be when we don't realize it's just because we were born into a certain set of circumstances. But when you see somebody else's world, your brain expands and you become a lot more understanding and a lot more forgiving of other people and yourself. It's really, really, really powerful stuff. Really powerful. It's just, you, be, you become so much more okay with any type of personality out there. It's amazing. It's just, you could be friends with anybody. Um, so that's what's been going on in my life in the last few years. And Amir Tashem, the plan this year, uh, you kind of, uh, you know, is thinking on Yom Kippur, what my next move is, my big move is going to be this year. And that is to get started with getting this, these courses out there. So, uh, Mir Tzashem, that's where we're headed this year, and it's going to be under development. Um, if you know of anybody that wants, you know, this, corp- uh, this course brought to their community, or maybe yeshiva, or even a group of adults, I'm there. I'm there. It's a powerful, powerful course. We have tons of testimonials. We have hundreds of kids that took it. So it's a, and life-changing, literally life-changing. Um, so, um, that's, that's basically, you know, what, um, what this, I'm just going to give you an overall, um, explanation of what this podcast is going to be based on. It's going to be a random podcast. It's not going to be so structured. I don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm just going to be rambling. Um, basically you need to have a self of identity in this world. How does identity work? Identity is who you are. Now, everybody's like, I don't know if I have an identity, I don't know if I know, whatever, I just do stuff, whatever, I think what I want, you know, and I I put what I want, and I I do that thing. I don't know if I have identity, this is who I am, or whatever, you know, I don't think I have one, you know, (laughs) to tell you the truth, like, I never was told that I have one, nobody told me who I am, I don't think I say this is who I am, I'm just, you know, I walk around, untrue. Everybody has an identity, and through different stages of, of your life, you identify as different things that you see in the world. And everybody, everybody's dying to have an identity. Why? Why is everybody dying to have an identity? What is this? And humanity has this craving, and you'll watch it. There's a book from Dr. Seuss, it's called 
Are You My Mother? I think it's from Dr. Seuss. I hope I'm getting that right. And it's about this little chickling who goes around and is born into the world and has no idea who it is. Like, has no idea who's his mother. <laughs> and it, it, the first thing it sees is a tractor, I think. And he goes over and says, are you my mother? And the thing's just not talking. It's just going, Aah! and he's like, oh my gosh, you are my mother. And it's like identifying as the tractor or something for a while until that doesn't work. And the no, that's not my mother. And then you get uh, this mean animal or whatever, and it's chasing after him. And he's like, that's not my mother. Are you my mother? Oh, you're my mother. No, you're not my mother. I'm probably saying the story not 100%, and I forgot what the exact ending is. The point is, we're the same exact thing with our identity. Born into a world without an instruction booklet. We're literally a blank slate. We're born into the world no, having no idea who we are, what we're supposed to be doing. And at a certain point, you know, we, you know, when we start becoming more and more conscious of it, we're like, wait, what is flying in this world? <laughs> like, I have no idea who I Like, what am I supposed to be doing and who am I? Nobody tells you. Teenagers when they hit that stage where they start really thinking about life and their brain is full, if really developing, they, that's the big question that really hits them deep. Who in the world am I and what am I supposed to be doing? And that's where things go wild because they're like, hey, I'm a hippie. I'm a, and the parents are like, oh my gosh, why don't you cut your hair for three weeks? And um, let's go through the stages. We're born to the world. Our identity is totally fluid for good reason. You're supposed to develop who you are. It's up to you. It's not, it's not, this is Bechira. So it's not, Hashem's not going to give it to you. You're going to have to go search and create something beautiful. When you're born into the world, you're blank slate, and you identify who. So the first thing you identify is actually your mother. This is in science. This is what they say. The children identify as the mother. They're one with their mother. When they're feeding from the mother, and the mother's giving them milk, they are one with their mother and their mother is them. It takes them time to separate, to be able to hop, oh my gosh, there's me and then there's another. They don't even know that. Like they totally are identified as their mother. And you know, after that stage, it probably goes to their bottle, but then it goes to toys. Um, and they say, a child identifies as a toy. It's a very deep thing. It's not just that a toy is something that the kid likes. When you take away a toy from a child, and the child's having a tantrum. He's going wild and screaming like his life is over. It, it is because his life is over. Because you took away something that's not just his thing. It's him. You took away him. And his world just died. A kid deeply identifies as his toys because that's his world. That's all he knows of. He sees things that he's interested in as becoming him. And, and that's who I am. I am an airplane. It represents things to him. I, flying, freedom, the ability to go wherever you want and experience whatever, you know, and be light and not be heavy. Uh, these are very, very deep concepts that the child loves and it makes him feel good. And that's what I, that's who I am. That's my essence. That's me. That airplane's me. And when he's playing with it, he's, this is his world. And when you take it away from me, he has nothing else. There's nothing out there for him. He doesn't know of anything else. That is him. And the kid's throwing a tantrum. Candy. <laughs> Take away the lollipop. Kid's gone. It's just a 10 cent lollipop. Buy another one. No. You just killed him, so to speak. Um, and we laugh. But the truth is we know better. As you go through life, you just start identifying as... Um, you know, things on, on just a higher level of physicality, which is really funny because, again, you're born into a world and you start identifying as physical objects because, what else, you know, you don't know much better. Um, you know, teenagers just identify as their bicycle, you know, as they get older, it's their bicycle, and they, which represents the freedom and the, you know, ability. I remember when I was, like, my bicycle, just the ability to just, like, that was my go-to whenever things went wrong. Um I actually remember, I, I identified as an airplane when I was like four or five. I, I, I was the guy, I was the little kid going around the yard like, <laughs> come here for landings. <laughs> I, it, wasn't, it wasn't like I was playing airplane. I was an airplane. It's very deep. It's true. I, I had in my brain, like one day I'm going to figure out how to put wings on my arms and I'm going to do it. Um, and um, we, all, we all do it. We all do it. We all did it. We all do it. We do it now. It, it, it just goes through the stages. Uh, after that, I think I was a lion for a while. I watched a, a show. 
<laughs> about lions at a very young age, and I was very, very inspired. And I was lying. I was, I was literally, I literally would come to Shabbos when I was, I think, four years old, five years old, on all fours and roaring, <laughs> and like for like practice, like see, I would look in the mirror, make sure my teeth were sharp, because I was, I was a killer. I was going to be able to kill people, whoever I wanted, and jump on people, and 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 be p all powerful that nobody can touch me, and very, very fast, like the lions. I was a lion at that stage. You couldn't get me out of it. It was pretty difficult for my parents probably, right? You know? <laughs> but don't worry, I got out of that stage pretty quick. And then I identified as the next stage. You know, like I said, my bicycle or um, and whatever toys and things. And I remember Playmobil was big for me. And, and, and we all do that. Everybody, everybody's got it. Lego, uh, whatever, toys, games, chess, uh, board games. Uh, I am... A mathematician. It just gets it gets more sophisticated as you get older, you know. Or I'm a scientist. Adults it is the same exact thing. Adults is the same exact thing. Teens is the same exact thing. Teens they get older. They're like I identify. I am a celebrity. Um, when teenagers are getting you know into social media and um, and to celebrities and these type of things, it's much deeper than this is just like an interesting subject for them. When you take away a kid's phone, you're not taking away a kid's phone, you're taking away his identity, that's why they freak out. Well, a kid will be, there. a kid, you know, unfortunately that attached to their smartphones and these type of devices and social media and stuff, when you take away their phone, you are taking away their world. And when you make fun of their, their that their phones or their social media, you're making fun of their world because that's who they're identifying at that stage of life. That's all they have. It's a very, very deep subject. Um, a celebrity is not someone that people are just into. Sometimes it could just, oh, it could just be like cute, cool, like they're cool people, but and not much more than that. But a lot, a lot of times, people will actually start living through the celebrity. There's this concept of vlogs on YouTube and things like this where people live through the celebrity and it's that identity you identify when that person something happens to that person it hurts you it's like you're connected it's the same thing they'll watch i found when i found this out my mind was blown but they'll watch every single day there are people that will post their life for 45 minutes and people will sit there watching them making decisions by the refrigerator should i have pizza with mac with macaroni and cheese or should i have pizza with salad today Comment down below what you think. And people take it, they're seriously like, no, please choose them. What is going on? <laughs> what is going on? You have time for like, you're wasting your life. To... It's not like wasting, that is their life. They're identifying, they're living through somebody else. That's their world. That's what's all that they see is important to them in the world. And that's who I am. Um... It's a very, very deep concept. And don't think that we're any better. I mean, as, as we get older, it just gets more complicated, the toys. But they're still toys. Adults get bigger toys. They just get a big car, fancy Maserati or something. Who are they? The Maserati. The status. The big house. I am a doctor. Really? You, that's who you... That's what your identity is? You sure? Because what happens when the doctor passes away? So then, you know, then you're left with nothing. And the scariest part of it is really, in essence, that everything leaves us. And that's the scariest thing where all of this is headed to, which is really, really scary, is that all this stuff, whenever you identify yourself with something that's physical, something like good looks, something like a talent, something that, uh, 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 an object that's outside in the world, a car, a house, a doctor, uh, uh, you know, your job, your status, all of these things are going to pass and they do pass. It's just a matter of time. They even pass away before you die. They pass away as life goes on even. You start understanding how little they're really, really worth and how short they're, they, they last. And when that happens, it's very, very depressing because people are not only losing their item, their car or their house or their being a doctor, because now it's time to retire, um, they're losing their identity. And now they're like, now what in the blazes am I? What am I? What am I? Who am I? I am nothing. It's very, very scary stage of life for people. Um, you know, we, we all know, you know, Bernie Madoff's uh, son, you know, was very, very sad, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, he committed suicide. And like, I heard this, I'm like, what, what does that have to do with anything? 
his, they found that his father, the money was all being, you know, uh, it's all cheated money. And the son commits suicide. But what does money have to do with committing suicide? So what if you lose a lot of money and stuff and people hop that your that you're big status, who you are, your status goes away, this, you weren't so big. But what does it have to do with you? No, because that's who he was. That was his status. And when that was ripped away from him, there was a huge void that he couldn't fill. And that just meant that there's nothingness for me. I have nothing to fill my void. I, I am no one. And someone that is no one will do things like that. And that's how that stuff happens. Um, it's a scary concept. It's a very scary concept because if you don't get this concept straight, you're eventually going to run right into a brick wall at the end of your life, Chas Hashem. Because all of it, all of it, all of the identities that we have that are available for us out there in the world, all will leave and all will die and nothing comes with. Very, very funny when you think about it. I mean, the, the, the visual vis visualization of uh, coming up to Shemayim. It, when you come to Shemayim, very, very clearly, if you look up the Kabbalistic Svarim and, you know, Rabbi Kiva Tatz is very into this. Uh, when you come to Shemayim, you are exactly whatever you identified as. That's exactly what, whatever you built in this world is exactly what you'll be in that world. So if, if you are still stuck at the stage where you're a lion, ah, you're going to get up to Shemayim and you're going to see a bunch of lions that never grew out of the stage. They're going to say, oh, lions, line up over here. And, ah, and then you're going to have a bunch of people that are still identifying as their cars. You know, look at me. I have a Rolls Royce and I wear sunglasses, you know, what I mean? and all Rolls Royces, please pull up here. You will be a Rolls Royce. That's who you will be. And they'll say, Rolls Royces, please. They'll pull up, you know, you know, like wave at every look at me. You know, I'm special. And, uh, and um, you know, so you have the line and you have the Rolls Royce and then they're going to say, airplanes, please pull up over here. Pull up, old oh, doctors. Please pull up here. Hmm. And, you know, and they pull up with their uh, stethoscopes, whatever you call those things. You know. Hmm. Yes. You know. Old, you know. Very intelligent and stuff like that. And uh, and and the list goes on. Old oh, lawyers that are millionaires and uh, millionaires and people that have big houses. Old oh, big houses. You're, you're you're a big house. That's what you are. You walk around over here. Old right? oh, celebrities like. I'm a celebrity, right? <laughs> and uh, it's going to be very funny, actually, because you're going to have a bunch of lions, tigers, airplanes, celebrities, doctors, right? All of these fake identities coming up there. And they're going to say, uh, guys, like, oh, we're very sorry. All of you guys, go back. <laughs> like, uh, go back where? Nowhere. Like, there's nowhere for you to go. Like, we don't accept lions in Tylem Hava. And we don't, like, there's, there's nowhere to latch on. You, you have the wrong identity. <laughs> like, you're the wrong thing for what we, what we feed up here. Like, we don't feed lions. We just don't have the physical food up here for lions. And we don't have the status that makes the doctors or the lawyers and the millionaires and stuff uh, make you feel good. It's, this is not for you. You got the wrong world. Uh, you got to go back down there. Chaz <laughs> Jam. And, um... It's a scary thought because, if again, if you're identifying with something that's transient and just is going to go with time, then who are you when that thing leaves? This is, Rabbi Ram Torsky said this on a speech. It's so powerful. It's like if you identify as a Maserati or a big house, so who are you when you lose that big house or when you lose that Maserati? You are no one. And it's a very big void. Whew. So, who are you? What identity should you be? Um, and the answer to that is obviously, obviously has to be something that is beyond this world. Hakoyal Hevel. We read in Simchas Taira, Hakoyal Hevel, everything is nothingness. And what's interesting is that we read this at the happiest time of the year, the, what seems to be the most depressing Megillah, we read it at the most happiest time, they were just Sukkot, which is the mitzvah de Raisa, to be happy for seven, seven days. What do we do? Let's be happy! So let's read Kehelis. And we sit down and we open up Kehelis and we're like, Hakoil Havel. Everything is nothingness. A person works, he works hard all, all days of his life. 
Gamza Hevel, that's also Hevel. You go to parties and you go to this and it's all fun. You're getting a good status. That's also going to die and it's going to be nothing. And you're like getting really depressed. And you're like, this is not making me happy. This is making me sad. But the real answer to this, and I heard this from Rabbi Yom Glazer, is that as you go through the whole uh, in Miglos Kohelis, you'll see that every, every time he says, Tachas Hashem, Shakol Hevel, Tachas Hashem, everything is, is nothingness under the sun. Which means that everything that is in this world, which is physical things, anything that's based on the physicality, that's based on good looks, that's based on status, that's based on money, that's based on cars, houses, physicality, physical things don't last by definition. They can't. That's what a physical thing is. They don't last forever. Those things if you have an identity with those things, they will end up bringing you the biggest depression. Hakol tachas Hashemesh is hevel and will give you the biggest depression. The access to simcha on Sukkot is realizing that to the deepest of your depth, that tachas Hashemesh, nothing will end up truly giving you simcha. It will end up depressing you. For sure. The only access to true simcha is getting in touch with the true identity, getting in touch with fulfillment of life, of who I am, and that's lemalam in Hashemesh. That's not tachas Hashemesh. Akoyal hevel tachas Hashemesh. Anything in this world physical is going to fade and will depress you if you depend on it and identify with it because it will leave you with a void that I am nothing. The only thing truly that you have to start identifying with yourself is what's above the Shem, which is Ruchnius, Hashem. You need to start living something that's beyond you, beyond this world. That something that doesn't come and go, but some things that are steadiness, okay? Things like true deep love, connection, becoming part of another world, person, thing, Hashem, um, expanding your spiritual world. If you, you could identify with anything you want, your identity could be a car, it could be a thought, it could be whatever you want. If you could switch your identity to start being that I am another, okay, I'm part of another, that's who I am. I am part of a much bigger picture. I'm like him and him and him and him and him. And I want to see his world and his world and his world. And I want to see Hashem's world. That is an identity that doesn't end. It keeps going and going and going and going and bouncing forth because you're part of his world. And he says, whoa, I want to be part of your world. And then things get exploded and bigger and then they say your world your world and bigger and bigger and you and you know he shows you something you never saw he shows you something you never saw before and you're seeing bigger more and more and more and more worlds and you're constantly there's no end to the amount of expansion that's possible when you're living an identity of something that is forever and that is infinity so um the identity ultimately that a person has to try identifying is, is something that's way beyond this world. It has to be something that will not just pass with time. Now, here we go. This is a major, major, major side in what an identity is. What exactly is an identity? I'm going to give you the definition of identity. This is like insane. Here we go. What an identity is, and because you're probably saying at this point, very nice, that's a cool tool, but like, I don't really need it. Like, I'll just do Avedis Hashem or whatever. I don't need an identity. This is who I am. I'll just do stuff like nice things and good stuff. I don't need to find out or identify with it. Like, I am an Eved Hashem or I am a, a, a person that is for another, uh, you know, an Ayhev Yisrael. I am an... I know, I know, I know, I have the Dekudosh over the Yichu. I was thinking, I'm sorry, I'm getting off subject. I was thinking of Simchas Torah, I'm like dancing. I know, I know, I know. I am, I am, I am self-identity. I have the Dekudosh over the Yichu. I am, I am, I am what? 
I am a car, I am a car. So there's people that, do, yeah, there are people that are going around singing songs in circles. I'm sure in the Gaish world, you know, all the people, I am, I am, I am, oh, Maserati, I am, I am, I am, oh, doctor, I am, I am, I am, oh, millionaire. Yeah, but all those things, Die and leave. Hakol Hevel Tachas Hashemesh. What's the true access to Simcha? Is I know, I know, I know. Avda the Kudsha Berichu. That's an identity. Identity. That's who I am. That's my world. Something way beyond Tachas Hashemesh. Something that will always be there. When I show up there, they're going to say, Oh, you? Yes, we feed that type of food to this type of person. We have what you like. Perfect. I went off subject for a second. I'm just rambling, but let's go back. I was about to tell you what the aside of an identity is. What's an identity? This is huge. Huge. An identity is a hack. It's a shortcut. It is the biggest hack that you have in your system. An identity allows you to do things effortless. It allows you, it's a top to bottom uh, pyramid where you start when all of the actions that you do in your life are really connected to your identity. When they connect to your identity, as long as you identify with that thing, they just will, they're automatic reactions that come from that identity and will happen effortless, keyword effortless. And I'm going to give you an example. For example, like this, this is how it works. This is, oh, this is awesome. This is, this is crazy stuff. This is big, big, big stuff, guys. If you identify as a human being, okay, I am a human being, the, what an, the definition of an identity is that this is who I am, that is a simplistic term, which is a command where many chain reactions, automatic, keyword automatic and effortless, come out of that one command, okay? This is who I am, and then boo, 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 it automatically, your body will carry out all the uh, messages that are attached to that one command. I'm gonna give you an example. I am a human being. Human beings walk around like this and are nice. That is automatic effortless. If I would come over to you and say, here's a deer, bite into its neck, watch the blood pour out, and keep biting on the raw meat and swallowing it until you finish the entire deer. I'll give you a million dollars if you could do it. You're going to be struggling so hard because you're working against your identity. You're literally going to be like, oh, this is disgusting. This is inhumane. I can't do this. I have mercy. I this and that, whatever. Dude, if you could just identify as a lion, lions have no issues biting into it. Why? Because it's, it's things are, commit, are all attached to the main command, which says, I am a lion, and this is what lions do, <laughs> effortlessly. It's not a big deal for a lion. He's not like sitting here like, oh no, I feel so bad for this deer. I don't know if I can do this. No, it's, I'm a lion. This is what I do. <laughs> and it bites the whole thing. Okay, let's give another example. Okay, so let's say I give you a gun and I say, here, kill somebody. Are you going to kill somebody? It's going to be really tough for you. You're going to be sitting there like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I mean, I'm, I, 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 I don't think it's, I think it's inhumane. This and that. But what if you could get yourself to identify as an extremist terrorist? Here, here's a gun. Thank you very much. Effortlessly. It's a hack. You hack the system. There's no more effort. There's no more thought. It's, this is who I am, and this is what terrorists do. They go, lions kill, right? Humans are nice to be like, hi, nice to meet you. Those are identities. When that is the main command that's feeding the entire system, all these things that branch out come out of that main command, and it's a uh, fast road to the main command, and it's effortless, all the side reactions that come out of the main command. That's what an identity is. It's an algorithm that you create that it's a main command that will have a number of chain reactions that will come effortless from that main command. That is what an, an identity is. And I'll, I'll tell you, um, you know, when you work on yourself, uh, and this is what we're going to be getting into 
not this podcast, we're running out of time, but a different one, is that, like this. When you work on something, you can work on two things. You can work on your specific accomplishments, or you could work on your identity. The identity is the fast road, really. It's the fast road. If you work on specific accomplishments, it's gonna take you a lot, a lot of effort and a lot, a lot of time. When you work on your identity, it's the fast road to multiple areas of accomplishments. And I'll explain that. Um, you know, somebody came over to me and was asking me, um, he recently is, he's asked me, um, how do you work on Shemar Habris? You know, a person in Shemir Sinayim, um, different taivas and thoughts that people have and to keep away from, from bad, uh, you know, thoughts and inappropriate actions. And, um, and I told him, you know, I'll tell you the truth. My Rebbe, Rebbe Kalish is, is really against, um, working directly on that Indian for specific reasons. I think I'm pretty sure the, the reason, you know, the more, uh, it, it's not, not with, with all things, but specifically with this area, the more you say, oh, I'm, I'm going to work on, you know, Shaymer Habris, I'm going to work on Shmiris, I'm going to work on Shmiris, you'll be like, oh, wait one second. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, let me go do it. And it reminds you and it brings it back, these flashes of pictures or whatever, in back into your brain. So the more you focus on not doing it, it's in relation to it. And it can bring it back up to you, which is very hard to get out. And it can keep your mind. So it's it's a very tricky subject to work on directly. It doesn't like working on directly. So what other path do you take? The fast road. What's the fast road? To getting to Shemar Bris, to the Taivas. Identity. Identity. And I'll explain it to you like this. Um, if... If I have to work on like my typhus and this, it's really, really tough. But if who I am, if I am, if I could identify, I am a Ben Tyra, Ben Tyras don't do that. And it's simple. It's automatic. I don't do that because I'm a Ben Yeshiva. I'm Yeshiva Bachar. I don't do that. Or I'm, or I'm Ben Tyra. I'm an Eved Hashem. Eved Hashems don't do that. It's a very, very simple reaction to the thing. And I'm going to bring this to you a little bit more clearer for you. Um, thank God, when I, when I grew up, Baruch Hashem, I have a tzaddik of a brother. His name is Gavriel. Gavriel Balls, I'm a real tzaddik. And one of the things he really taught me, and I got this through osmosis, through my brother, directly from my brother, is, um, you know, we grew up in L.A. and there's a lot of posters and interesting stuff that go on in L.A. And sometimes you're driving down the street. And I remember as a little kid, he would be driving through the street and all of a sudden I'd see my brother every once in a while, he'd be like, and he would have a face of disgust. The amount of time from when he saw the poster to this look of disgust that would come automatically was so fast, it's impossible that it was a decision. It wasn't a decision, it was an automatic reaction because ich. And now it doesn't make sense because what do you mean? Any normal teenager or a kid that age would have a taiva to look at that. So who are you trying to fool? No, no, he didn't have a taiva. He didn't have a type of because that wasn't his identity. He wasn't identified with a regular teenager who is interest, who is like a movie man or a celebrity or whatever. He was a yeshiva bacher. Ich. Yeshiva bacher, don't look, don't look at that. It wasn't a decision. It wasn't, that, it wasn't like he didn't have the deep down, you know, like the capacity for it. He, he was a, he did like, like a kid like anybody else, whatever. But he identified as a yeshiva bacher. I'm yeshiva bacher. And a very serious yeshiva bachar, and a very serious yeshiva, like, yeshiva bachar, don't do that. Ew. Ew. Pff. Disgusting. Like, it's not my world. I don't live in that. It's not my, it's not my identity. I'm a ben yeshiva. Ben yeshivas don't do that. Ew. And I got that from him. I, like, I, I saw it a number of times, and I was so affected by it. I, I would do the same thing. Not because I was such a, I just got it through him. Osmosis. I was just, like, like Ew. And if somebody would say something at a table or something that was that was disgusting or or a bad word or so he, he was ever you know somebody was talking about an appropriate subject, he, same exact thing. Like, he didn't have to think. He doesn't have to fight about it. Like Gavriel, come on, it is kind of juicy. No, 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 no. <laughs> like because it, it, it wasn't that. Is this juicy? Is that I am a yeshiva bacharim. Yeshiva bacharim don't do that. Yeshiva bacharim hold. That's disgusting. It's a shortcut to getting all those areas accomplished in your life. Yeshiva Baruch does this, 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 this. A Ben Yeshiva, that's how he lives. He lives with Hashem. Or whatever you want to call Ben Taira, uh, Evet Hashem, whatever, you, whatever words you want to use. 
But the, the identity is a shortcut to get where you want. You want to work on the Shem Rebris, you want to work on Taivas, kind of hard to work on directly because it can bring up the subject. Ooh, but if you can identify, I am a Ben Tyra. That's why, oh, then it gets done quick. You want to finish a Masech, a very specific action that you want to get done. It could be murder. You have so many other things happen in your day, and sometimes you're not in the mood, and it seems boring, and you're, some days you are, and sometimes you're not, and you know, I have to still push myself to do it, and then my chafrusa does it, I have to push, and then I got my feeling, well, it's cold, this and that, and I don't want to go to show and learn, or whatever it is. It's a, it's a, it's a long path to getting the Masech done. But if you could identify who I am, I could be in the workforce, but who I am, I am not a doctor. I'm a Ben Tyra. That's what Ben Tyras do. They finish the Masech year. Boom. It's done. That, that's, it's the same thing as you see post. <laughs> automatic. I'm a Ben Tyra. Ew, I don't, I don't want to hear that. Disgusting. That's disgusting. I'm a Ben Tyra. That's who I am. I'm, I'm a Ben Tyra. I finish Masech. is done. I'm, I'm, fin I'm finishing myself. I, I go to sh I go to show every min minyanim. Every single every single minyan is happen happening this year. Why? <laughs> I'm a Ben Tyre. What do you mean? I don't, I, don't, I don't see any other option. That's what Ben Tyres do. You set the algorithm with a, a command that includes in it a, a number of automatic chain reactions. It's an algorithm which attaches to this identity, to this one word or one concept thing a ton of other actions that automatically get done. Having access to your identity is, one of the, is the real road to true power, to be true power, truly powerful in this world and getting a lot, a lot of stuff done. Because most of the time, a lot of people are working from the top down. You got to work from the bottom up. You got to work from where it all stems, where it all comes from. When you do that, Things automatically get done. It's and you know what the truth is. You really, you really have to hit it from both. You have to also do chitzenis miras apnimis pnimis miras as a chitzenis. It's in mitzvahim. We get maybe a different time, but um, but you need a you could hit it from all things. Of course, you have to work on your actions, but ultimately, the real powerhouse where you where you really get to real teshuva and real getting things, real access to your true power is getting is getting to your identity. Is to getting to that oneness of who am I, of my one identity, of what I identify as being. Because when you're being something, you don't have. It doesn't have. There's no effort to it. I am it, and that's powerful. Because we we all get too tired after a while of doing things, doing, doing, and you lose energy. Doing costs energy. But when you're being something, it doesn't cost energy. It's endless amounts of available energy because it doesn't cost energy. It's effortless. It's just a state of being. I am a Ben Tyra and I, that's, I, I, just, I, I am it. It's just in, in my brain. I don't have to do, right? When you are being a Ben Tyra, the, the things that the automatic reactions don't cost effort from you. It's all a state of being. I'm just, yeah, that's me. That's me. That's me. And it comes effortless. Um, big subject. I was just rambling. I hope we did good. Summarize. Hit the identity. Hit the identity. Go deep. Be powerful. Uh, there's two ways to work on yourself. You can work on the specific actions or you could get to where those specific actions stem from the algorithm. When you get down to the algorithm and you and you hop, you understand that that algorithm is totally fluid, and it can be totally changed by you. You were the one that made up the first algorithm of your identities when you were a child. You can rewrite them. Uh, when you realize that you have the power to write your algorithms for your identity, you could start creating for yourself identities that will get you to places where you truly want to get effortlessly without effort. Thank you so much for listening. We didn't get to the magnetic minds yet, but we will get to that in future podcasts. If you like this episode, give us some feedback, please. Please work very hard on these, and um, we got to know. Are we doing good? Are you enjoying? Uh, comment below. Let us know. Uh, send us an email. If you want more um, or if you want um, any of these type of seminars or classes taught anywhere, uh, we're starting to get out there. So... Uh, it would be my pleasure and um, uh, reach out to us. Uh, thank you so much for listening. We will see you.
next time.